It is very cold out here. I think somewhere around 15 below Fahrenheit, which is why I'm gonna spend as much time as possible in the heated shed today. You want in too, Didge? Today's priority, we are gonna go through the corn planter. I've got Zeth Key of uh, ZK Master Tech. He's got a YouTube channel, check it out. ZK Master Tech, pretty cool. He uh, works with Sloan Implement and works on these John Deere machines. So he actually came up, his longest service call ever, go check that out on, on his channel. We are gonna go through this thing and make sure everything is in tip top shape. First thing I'm gonna do is get these trucks out of the shed so that we got room to unfold that thing. Yeah, change of plans. We haven't gotten the batteries swapped in this one yet and it doesn't wanna start, so I'm gonna throw the charger on there for a little bit. Like I said in the previous video, we know it's got bad batteries. We have new ones for it. I just haven't gotten around to doing it because we need two people. I'll get it out of here. We'll get it done at some point. But first, I'm gonna hook up the hoses. That's a lot of hoses and wires. They're all labeled, but they're still, every year it's kind of a, it's a cluster. I'm gonna drop that quick hitch a little bit so I can put the hoses up and over the hitch. It's gonna make it a lot easier. I think our I think our special guest star is here. Knock knock. <laughs> knock knock. <laughs> I already almost got my hands a little bit dirty. Uh oh. It's been terrifying. <laughs> How's it going? Good man. What's good. Up? Good to meet you. Caleb. 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 Good, nice good to meet you. you I'm gonna make a little bit more room in the shop here so we can get started on stuff. Seth and Caleb are gonna be making a video for their channel as well here, so we're gonna kind of be doing two videos. We're gonna go through the planner for their video. They're gonna talk about what it is, what it does. Zeth's channel is, is uh, a lot more technical. It's gonna get into details of, of planter setup and what exactly we're gonna be looking for here as we go through the maintenance. And I'm gonna do my thing and just kinda show you guys what we got going on today as we get ready for spring. Caleb found uh, a little issue already. We've got the wrong size category on the two-point hitch. We're gonna have to flip that around and, and uh, go to a smaller category. We ran it that way last year, never had an issue with it, but he did say that they have seen planters jump out of that hitch before, which, which is a bad thing. I don't want a planter coming off at 10 miles an hour going across the field or worse, down the road. Wrecking all the hoses, all the wiring. So right here is what we're talking about. We need to put a, what'd you say, that's Cat 3? Yeah, so we need to support this here and take it off this pin out here, take these bolts out here so we can take these pins out and then slide it out of these arms here and then we can flip it around, slide it back in so we can put the pins back in. Simple as that. Simple as that. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. <laughs> also very important. Very important. <laughs> Seems like that door might be going up and down a lot today. Might need a punch. You got a punch? Yep. Okay. 
see this goes out the back. We oh, go that out goes back. out the back. Yeah, this one goes out the back. I'm going to scoot this back just a little. I was trying to get it work, work free to where she would come out. Got a bunch of stuff. So yeah, we were, we were sitting on this one. We need that one. We need this one. Just need the smaller groove. Yeah, it's never been used. Pull lined up. Persuasion. Persuasion. Oh, mine wants to come out. You see me? I had that all the way in. Need persuasion? Yeah. Found this hammer. Yeah, so it's a little caveman, but. Does that just lock in? Yeah, this is what locks this hook into the hitch. And well, then, I suppose then you put the put the cover over this. This is basically it. just holding this until we can get this one sure. in place. Yeah. There. That was a good catch, Caleb. Well, Ta-da. Thank now, you. Uh, the next thing I would do while we got it this far got an awful lot of play in that. You yeah. tighten that up? Um, oh yeah. That up, and that way we're not going to get any drift with our planter. Beautiful. Let's do it. That's better. That's got to be like a 3-4% increase in yield? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Like any other thing. <laughs> now that we got the hitch done, we're going to go ahead and get this generator ready to go and Caleb's going to go over what this thing is and why we need it. Came out easier to hop. Alright, so there's your generator unit. We're just going to turn this guy over and drain all the uh, high guard that's currently in there. So once again, we're going to be funnel. Yeah, making sure that Small we're using funnel. high guard. They're filming. It's very technical. Try not to dumb it down. You want to take that to him? No? I'll get it. You and your no thumb having pause. Somebody needs to clean their equipment a little better. One handed. Can you move here? I believe that's called the anti-rotation bracket. This is our anti-rotation bracket. Just a little bit. Do. You want me to zip it? Yeah. What that's going to do is kind of take some of that weight off that PTO so it's not hanging there. Perfect. Now go ahead. We got everything fixed up in the back. We're going to yank it out. Anna really, really wants a ride in this thing. It's a little chilly in here every time we open a 28-foot door when it's 15 below out. It's an Arctic breeze. It is. For sure. It's very calming. You're going to see a stamping um, that says either P or R on your um, cover. So for our hydraulic downforce, we're going to plug him in the pressure side. Plug our pressure side into our left side of our SCVs. See, it's way easier just doing it that way. <laughs> it's way <easier. laughs> yeah. You made that look difficult on your video. <laughs> We're going to pull the 6,000 Starfire off here now, which is actually much newer than the receiver we'll be putting on, but the difference is that one right there has RTK, so it's a lot more accurate. Accuracy is golden. So Caleb and Zeth have the hydraulics hooked up now. They've got the wiring hooked up. They're up in the cab checking out the monitor. They say I've got the latest and greatest, so that's good. Sounds like I need to move my RTK, or I should, recommended, to move my RTK from our 3000 to our 6000, which I didn't know we could do, but that gives you quite an extension if you lose signal from one of the towers. It actually gives you two weeks to still have that RTK signal. 
So I'm definitely going to be looking into that. Talking because we have our planner information down here. So these guys said we're ready to unfold, so we're going to get the trucks moved out of here. Just back them out and uh, make some room. Unfold that thing. Which means I really hope this will start. It's been a little while now. No problem. I'm hoping to just park these outside where I can get to them with a cord and I'm hoping they'll start in another four or six hours, whatever it takes us with this planter. But if I can't, at least I'll be close to the shop. I think the engines will stay warm enough. It's mostly the batteries on this one I'd be worried about. Or just being stuck on the ice. Oh, it's pretty tight? It's pretty close. Now we're in. I called in some pizzas, so I'm gonna run grab those for these boys. I brought you gifts. Oh, sweet pizza. <laughs> my favorite. I'm letting these guys do their thing now while well, my lunch settles a little bit, but basically what they're doing is going through and doing a much more in-depth, informative video of exactly how to go through the whole planter to make sure it's ready for spring. So they pulled a, a row unit apart here, talked about setting the gauge wheels, setting the openers, setting the tension on the bowls, the belt, everything they look for as far as what's going on inside there to make sure it's running correctly. So once they're finished up in there, I believe we'll just start going through one at a time and making sure everything is right. I already found a broken scraper. I'm mostly just excited for the weather to get nice enough that I can actually wash this thing up. An unshiny tractor. There we go. They got the brushes moving. You can see a little bit of what happens inside here. So there's no bowls in any of these, but you can see all those brushes spinning. So Caleb was in there running tests on the screen. We got everything spinning and it looks good, but he mentioned that we've got some, what'd you call them? So these are your pressure sensors for your accumulator. Yep. Um, we were doing the accumulator charge pressure test and we had multiple rows fail. About eight of them failed the uh, test. And if uh, you noticed when we were running that, some of these rows were really chattering. Yeah, they, they'd just kind of shake, they'd shudder. So, so either the system's not being reported correctly of the amount of pressure that it's getting, or we just maybe still have a little bit of air trapped in the system somewhere. So we're gonna run through an air bleed procedure again. We're gonna do that really thorough, make sure we get all the air out, then we're gonna run the test again. If we have a few that fail, what we're gonna try to do is swap some pressure sensors around with some known good rows. Then if those rows pass, that's gonna narrow it down that we just have a faulty pressure sensor, so. So if that sensor is not reading correctly, it can't calibrate itself correctly and give the correct amount of downforce, right? It's gonna get its signals crossed. It's not gonna get the appropriate amount of downforce when it's adjusting on the go as we go across the field. So it's important to have those working correctly. So we'll hook the hose up here and that'll cycle fluid through there basically to flush it out, make sure there's no air in this system. So we got one on each end of the wing here. It's going to flush those out. Now you can feel that oil it's flowing through that hose. Sure. So we're just bypassing all the actuators. So we're losing out all the air. So it's, it's actually, you can feel it kind of shuddering now. Yep. Will that go away if it bleeds air out? Um, not necessarily. Um, but we'll see when we get this done. We'll see how we get So we've cycled the left wing and the rear the rear units here. Now we will switch the hoses over to the right side. I might need a stretcher. All right, everything has been flushed out. Is he running it? Does that mean it flushed it? Yeah, we're gonna run the accumulator charge test. Okay. See if each one will pass. Okay. So is it testing one at a time? Yep. Okay. I don't know if you'll see it on camera or not. There you can kind of see him jump. So the machine is going through and running a test on the actuators up there to make sure things are right. Zeth said he can see the red bars on the display up in there on the display. 
and that means we got some that are not passing. So it may be a sensor issue. I'm trying to do them over and over again. Okay. See, because sometimes it'll come out of it and it'll, it'll bleed it out. Okay. Oh my. That's a lot of rows. So that's what, half of them? Uh, yeah, probably. Man. Is that something where they could have all gone bad over winter like that? That's what happened on that last one. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's fine. It's, fine. it's this top one here? Yeah. So right now he's just going to swap sensors. This one was bad? Yeah. Or got reading bad? Oh, got squirted. Wow. So if it's a sensor issue, it should. Now one should be bad and two should be good. Spackle happens. <laughs> Look at that, right on the lens, right there. Oh, you Darn it. I'm gonna go to the other shed here and get a bag of floor dry. Uh-oh, you okay? Here, take it to the doctor, please. Thank you. You're gonna need uh, insurance information, birth date, and social security. I'll go grab that. I know there's a bag in here somewhere. A bag? A bag. Got it. Now I hate floor dry, but it is, it is effective. You just gotta clean it up once the puddle's dry. When we swapped them, number two still failed. Ah. Uh, number one still passed, so sensors are fine. Okay, he just said this valve wasn't opening up quick enough to make the sensor happy. So, but now you, you ran that, you purged them, and now we're all good. We are golden. We don't have to change like 12 sensors. No, no, Just we, flush them out. Yep, we are good to go. Beautiful. That was easy. Neighbor called. He's stuck with a skid loader. Clearing his driveway. Dropped one side of the skid loader down, and now he can't move. So I'm going to take the 6175, a chain, a yank him rope, and go see, hopefully, hopefully I can yank him right out of there. I don't know if you can tell, but I still got a little bit of snow to clear in the yard here. I just haven't had, honestly have not had the time. Bit of a drifted area here at the end of the driveway. That's not more than 10 or 12 feet. Oh, that's not so bad. That's just basically loss of traction there. Shouldn't be a problem, I'm hoping. No problem. He's got probably a bigger snow problem here than we have back home, so I'm gonna make a few cuts for him and open it up. That way, he has to spend a little bit less time in that skid steer pushing stuff around. Always good to help the neighbors out a little bit. I think I'll back this thing back in the shop. We're done with the planter for the day. <laughs> We threw the blower in the shed, checked out the race car shop for a little bit. Uh, Derek and Corey came over, we did a little little race car work. Caleb and Zeth took off, they'll be back in the morning. So I, we'll see you guys in the morning then, okay.